I'm Kerry Fink with Helping Seniors of Brevard, and it's time for Helping Seniors Update for today, which is Monday, April the 6th. Hope you're doing well and things are good with you. And I have the privilege of having uh, via Zoom call with me right now, Joe Steckler, our president and founder. How are you doing today, Joe? All right. Well, since we finally got on the Zoom thing, I'm, I'm doing great, Gary. It's good. It's good. Well, it's good to have you uh, really to talk about this because the first thing we were going to try to update folks on was the car raffle. And folks, the car right. raffle is on. And so please, uh, helpingseniorscarraffle.com is where you get your tickets and you can support the work of Helping Seniors. The only thing that is adjusted is the date of the grand drawing. So Joe, you want to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on and how we're how we're making the adjustment based on staying safe from what the governor has ordered us to do. Well, you know, uh, I'll address this to the folks that are that are viewers, Carrie. Um, we have a tremendous Facebook following on our Facebook for mine and for our organization, and people have bought tickets before, so we we're reaching out to a, lo a lot of people and. We're in the same boat that uh, everybody else is, and nonprofits across the board have been hit pretty hard. And what's important for our viewers to understand is a couple things. We simply postponed the drawing because if we do the drawing at, at some other, you know, on the date it's supposed to be done, nobody can get in to see the, the cars. And that's that's 99% of the fun is seeing what's there in that museum. So sort of following the lead of our president and our governor, uh, our, our uh, Mark Pylock, who's the owner of the museum, has said simply, we have to postpone everything. So I just, I just want our, our viewers to understand that we, we had to delay the, uh, the drawing. People are still buying tickets. But you know, if 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 we were holding the car raffle at the same time as supposed to be, and we would be inundated with with ticket requests right at this point as we were the last several years. But it's important for our people that that, that do support us to know that we're going to do we still have the raffle, and it's important that they continue to buy the tickets like they have because uh, a nonprofit sort of runs like a, 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 you budget your, your funds in your household. And so much has to come in at certain points in the year so that we, we stay funded. We have a very, most nonprofits don't even have a reserve. We have a small reserve. And when we draw into the reserve and, and the ticket sales don't come in, it hurts us. And uh, it, it, I just want our our viewers to understand how important it is because by having this organization, we can help a lot of people. And we'll talk about that a little bit, how it's important because uh, we got to talk a little bit about resources. And uh, one of the things that, that sort of hit me, I'm retired military. And uh, my wife went over to the uh, commissary store and at, at, at 8.30 this morning, and uh, the lines were enormous. She turns and she says, I realize I'm not gonna get in there. And she was you know, trying to find toilet paper and some of the other things. So she went into Publix, no lines, plenty of toilet paper. <laughs> Actually, it was Charmaine, Charmaine, Charmaine? <laughs> yeah, Charmaine. Good, good. And, uh, and yeah, it was, I think it was a super soft or something like that. It was, you know, it's not gonna hurt you. It's, you have to be, but not to get too personal. But it, it, the, the thing that disturbs me, Carrie, is that like the slowness in technical sales, people, my own opinion, and I, I, I was a small young man in World War II, and uh, we didn't have hoarding then. I mean, you could go to the store and buy toilet paper. I don't understand why it is that people today think they have to, to deplete the stores. And I was, I was tr tr truly, truly uh, surprised when I went to the store last week with my wife and I saw empty, empty shelves. And that's not a good sign. That's not what American people do. You know, we support each other. 
and that's the purpose of helping seniors. We're supporting other people that need help. And that's why we want, I think, it was your idea to start these updates. I think it's a fantastic thing because I'm the president of the organization. I founded it and I know, I know what importance of, of, of information and our viewers need to know what we talk about. It, it's so important, especially right now, because uh, one of the reasons why we started the Helping Seniors Updates is because in this day and age when things are delayed, you know, we, we look to print magazines, but they, you know, are a little bit slower in coming out right now because of all the restrictions and things. And then they want us to be uh, safe by staying uh, socially distant. So by using the tools that we have with the internet and social media, this is a great way for us to keep people up to date on what's going on. So for example, when uh, the governor put out the rules about not being able to have uh, mass gatherings, uh, which is what effectively precluded us from being able to have the um, Helping Seniors Car Raffle on its originally scheduled date of April 25th, because they just didn't want to have large gatherings. Though this becomes a way that we can let people know that yes, the car raffle is on, you can get your tickets today. In fact, another topic that we have written down, Joe, to talk about today was that there's some new guidance and some new opportunities for charitable donations for 2020 um, that we had emailed back and forth about uh, at the end of last week that the federal stimulus bill is encouraging um, as well for nonprofits because um, as you had written, you know, these are some tips about this bill that relate to nonprofits such as helping seniors and we need your help to be able to do what we do. Kim Bernard, our education specialist is taking calls, uh, Joe, even as we speak from uh, seniors all around the county, you know? Well, oh, Carrie, Carrie, one of the things, important things that uh, Kim did, Kim Bernard is our education specialist at the office and Kim has thought about, you know, it, it's, it's fine to, uh, to call and ask about food pantries and everything, but what she did was she did a lot of research and, and prepared a list of food pantries, but we all always been thinking about the, the human that's got to eat. Many of the humans walk around with a dog on a leash and the cats. And well, you don't put the cat on a leash. Well, even though we did have a cat when Terry and I used to go for our evening walks, we had a cat and a dog on a stupid cat would follow us. And uh, he would go up and down a hill there. It was the old cat, you know, 10 feet in front or 10 feet behind us. But uh, animals still need to be fed too. And uh, so Kim has prepared a list of all these resources and she's put them out on our uh, website. Yes. And yes. These, these are things that, uh, you know, if a viewer says, gee, I think this is a good idea. Call force, Harry code 321-473-7770. Tell Kim what you think is a good idea. You know, we don't have all the answers. And I've been, I founded this thing in, in 2011. And Lordy, I, I think of all the things that we've added to our information net, network over the years. And, uh, the thing that makes us a little different from some of the other organizations that provide information, they don't, they don't really do the education part of it and they don't really do the follow-up part. You know, it's nice for a, a, a 90 year old man to call and say, gee, I need help, but does that help exist on a one-time basis? Or I don't think so. I'm getting older myself and I know what it means to have somebody call and i'm fortunate i've got my wife but there are so many people out there living alone and they don't have a partner a spouse in the house with them all they have is that phone call that's going to come and kim does that she calls these people to see how they're faring and i know seniors helping seniors does the same thing for their clients they follow up and they just they just don't just drop it and you know a number of people said, yeah, you know, how many times a day or how many times a week can you do these weekly updates? Uh, and it's just like when I started this thing years ago, somebody said to me, well, Joe, 
you know, once you put the information out, how much, how much can you write about stuff? I find a numerous number of topics that I can write about or talk about. And uh, every time we have a session like this and people watch it, we're going to, across the bottom of that screen, they're going to see people that support us. And the people support us, I want I want our viewers to know who's helping the seniors. Love and those, and yeah, you know, and the businesses that support us, you know, you can support those businesses too. And we're finding now in this uh, coronavirus, I got it right that time. I have a hard time remember how to pronounce that coronavirus, but it is it's a scary thing, Carrie. And I think people really, really have to pay attention to what they're doing with uh, with this disease. It's not like the flu. We don't have a vaccine yet for it. We don't have something that's gonna protect us. And it just seems like it's something that once it gets inside the body, it just, it destroys the lungs. And uh, I'm not a doctor and I don't profess to be a doctor, but I, I am, a, you know, I have a brain just like everybody else that watches TV. And they, and they form an opinion. And I think in forming an opinion, you need to have a, a good access to information that can help you as you form that opinion on what you do. If you're a single person living alone, if you call our number, 473-7770, Kim, in most, not all, but in most instances, she can direct you in the right direction. But what's important, if it doesn't work, you can call her back or she'll follow up with a phone call. And between the two of you, you can figure out what went astray. And maybe we can get it back on track. And that's so important. You know, that's, that's one of the things that people often ask. They say, well, are you like a referral service? And we say, no, no, it's much more than that. Since Helping Seniors was founded, we've helped over 3,000 families. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I always say this is the little organization or the little engine that could. Because uh, it's surprising to me how often, by knowing where the resources are, we're able to make an impactful difference. And so the cases, as, as we've talked about many times, uh, some cases are simple where you can just say, here's a phone number, now you should be off and running but many of them require six, seven, eight, nine phone calls. And the other thing that I always hear from Kim, and I know you know from, from talking to callers directly, is that uh, usually it starts with a call about one situation, but then there ends up being three or four other things or more that come into the, to the uh, process and they have to be resolved as well. So we really end up uh, spending and investing a lot of time to try to make something better for somebody as we go along. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like going to a doctor. When you tell the doctor you got, you know, you think you have an earache or a nose ache or a throat ache or something else, and the doctor sticks that thing in your ear and takes a look in your ear and you see something in your ear or, it, you know, it's a related problem. And that's the same thing you're talking about when people call helping seniors. It's not, you may have and generally do have more than one problem, but what is the problem that is the worst. And can we solve the worst problem first? Mm -hmm. And that, that that's so important because I, you know, over the years I've gotten calls from people that they they they, they, don't, they don't have the money they need, but they don't stop to think about what what can they really do to help themselves. It's just like a reverse mortgage. Uh, people uh, some people are not afraid of them. Some people are terribly afraid. And you should rightfully be very, very afraid of going to somebody that's going to lead you down the wrong path in a reverse mortgage. But use correctly. Use correctly now. And you, it's just like if you if you put a hundred, you know, if you put a couple thousand dollars in a bank and you want to save it for somebody. You can't use it. You got to leave it stay there. Same thing with the reverse mortgage. You take it and you use the funds for what you took them for. And in the case of people that are, have, have you know run short of money right now, uh, it's much better to uh, put food on the table and get you what you really need. Now I'm not talking about going on a 
well, they're not going to go on a cruise because that's pretty much ruled out now. But people find ways to take vacations or spend the money that they, they need to hold in reserve to get them through a situation like we're facing today. And we don't know how long we're going to be locked down. So it's important for people not not to what we call hoard, not to see how much you can get to stockpile uh, if you have enough for your family. And But if people uh, are careful in how they purchase and how they spend their money, uh, we can get through this. And but there are going to be problems, and, and we can help in some cases. But when it gets in, it gets to the business of actually needing money and expecting nonprofits to help with that, that's very difficult because many nonprofits can get food from the food banks, and they they can help by people sharing food with them. So maybe something they don't eat, and it can go to a food bank and. And the food bank can, can parcel that out to places that really, that people need help. You know, that's so true. And I think that's one of the reasons, too, why uh, uh, the work of helping seniors is so important, because we get calls from people that really don't know uh, where, where, which way they should turn. And it happens in, in a several different ways, as you know. Number one, it happens because our county is growing so fast in terms of population, people moving in. And then secondly, as you know, we get a lot of calls from adult kids of, of uh, seniors in our area who are wanting to check up on mom or dad and figure out what's going on. And they're, you know, with travel bans and all those kind of things, they can't get here, which is another reason why the work of helping seniors is so important at this time. And also the thing that we do day in and day out is try to get information in people's hands so that they do know where they can turn and one of the things we've been doing with these Helping Seniors updates is trying to find out with local businesses who's open, what services are they doing, what is available. Uh, we shared several resources uh, on these programs, and these are all archived, by the way, uh, both on the Helping Seniors YouTube channel and on the Facebook page. So if you missed a program, you can go back and see. And I think on Friday, uh, we tried to cover, uh, there was some financial information from our congressman bill posey he had put put up a bunch of links uh to resources that may be helpful on that level we also put in uh some links for the county government which was trying to keep up with a list of restaurants that are open uh, as far as being able to do takeout and things like that and then we've tried to add to that like we already talked about with the resources yeah. that put together about the uh, food banks and places that you can go and 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 retrieve things too yeah. There are just a lot of things we can do, and uh, I, I think that I, I uh, want to, you know, thank you for for for, for uh, taking your time to get these these updates out. And uh, this is this is about as long as these updates should be. And if we we make them too long, then our people are not going to not going to watch. And I, I want to see us get good information out, and just like you're doing. So. Uh, I'd be happy to come on anytime you want me to come on, but we need to get some of our sponsors on so uh, people can get a take on how how they can help the sponsors keep their businesses going and how the, the sponsors can help the people that need the help. I want to close us out today. I just wanted to follow up. Uh, these are some things that we want to tell you to please check with your tax professional for details, but there was three items I just wanted to highlight. The car raffle is on. You are able to get your tickets at helpingseniorscarraffle.com. The minute the governor lifts the restrictions on gatherings, uh, Joe, I know you're already talking to Mark. There, there's a new date that's in the works so that we can have this party that everybody is looking forward to at the American Muscle Car Museum. But I want to let you know that uh, they're making some special provisions, even in the tax code, to make sure that they recognize when you give money to helping seniors, it is going to be uh, deductible this year. So a donation, these are three things I want to give you real quick before we close today. A donation of $300 or less, whether or not you itemize your taxes, you'll be able to deduct your donation to a nonprofit for your federal taxes from here on out for 2020. Also higher value donations, an individual can make a cash only gift and deduct it up to 100% of the adjusted gross income for the year. And it says this is only valid for 2020 due to the stimulus package 
And then there's a substantial benefit for corporate charitable gifts. And the benefit for those is usually limited to 10% of taxable income, but they've increased that to 25%, making 2020 charitable gifts more attractive to many companies. So if you are in a position to support us in the work of helping seniors, now is a great time to do it because we really need it. But also, it seems like it, they're going to make it worthwhile for you on a, on a taxable level, too. So I want to share that. HelpingSeniorsCarRaffle.com is a great place to get involved. Your donation does make a difference. And I kind of think that we want to close out there, Joe. Any closing thoughts? Well, I, 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 it's, I, it's a great I, it's a great thing that you just mentioned. I should have mentioned it too because I know you and I wanted to talk about it. And that's that's the thing we gotta we gotta pick three or four things we want to talk about. Talk about those, and then and people get a good 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 feel about what's happening. But it is true, Carrie, that that people are going to be able to deduct. But in the past that deduction was part of uh, finding an overall deduction. But since, since the whole thing has changed, what, what the president is going to let us have happen this year is once a person determines what their final taxable amount is, that charitable deduction that they have is going to be deducted from that. So mm -hmm. it will have more of an impact. And there are a lot of people that donates eight, nine, or ten thousand dollars a year to charities, and so uh, yeah, if if you want to, uh, you know, every everything counts, and you have the, the the multiplier effect, and the more people that donate to us, um, it it helps us our run our business and of helping people. And at the same time, it adds into their what they what they could do to uh, to uh, get a deduction that will is a significant amount. And, and and there's a big difference in how you deduct it this year as as compared to the past. Yeah, I think it's going to really help, and it's going to help uh, organizations like ours uh, be able to continue to do the services that we do for the community. And I yeah. think it's going to be a good moment for us. So, Joe, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, viewer, for joining us. Uh, be sure to check HelpingSeniorsUpdates.com. HelpingSeniorsUpdates.com. We publish this information there. We'll put those links there so you can find them. And join us again on Wednesday for the next episode of Helping Seniors Updates. I'm Kerry Fink. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Kerry.